Out there, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Though you profess yourself to be a believer and to be of the church, never see yourself higher than another, especially if you yourself are still on the fence of repenting unto the Lord. And when I say repenting, I mean wholeheartedly repenting confessing and giving your life unto the Lord God, being forgiven and receiving his spirit and living the life in which Christ from the Holy Bible has called us to live, being led by the Holy Spirit. I realized in a lot of conversations and I myself in sin would do these things having been blind to the fact of the word of God, which speaks powerful, especially in Luke, where his disciples were speaking to him about the Galeans, in which they stated that the Galeans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices, in which they seen this, the disciples seen this to be somewhat of an abomination, so Jesus said, answering. See, Jesus gave them a different answer. So it's like when certain people come up to you and they seek to point the fingers at someone that's just uh, destined for hell, hellfire and the lake of fire and to be punished greatly, especially someone that's within the church. And they say, let's let's say, for example, so that you may understand, and then we'll get into the scriptures and what I'm what the point is I'm trying to uh, get you all to understand that you yourself may cease from doing these things if you do these things. So when it comes to people of the world or even those within the church, let's say someone within the church, okay, we see we get this often, like say a pastor. Let's say we see on news or, okay, a pastor or someone within the congregation or somebody that's worldly, whomever. Let's say that someone within the church was caught um, in theft or in fornication or whatnot. And then another individual within the church, maybe not part of his church, comes to another and says, oh, you heard about so-and-so and he done this and he did this and he did this. What a terrible person he is. And then with them saying that, they're expecting the other person in which they spoke to to basically um, not only affirm what they just said, but add, I would say, shade to it, add negativity to it. But then I read in scriptures where one of the um, disciples was speaking unto the Lord about the very example in which I just uh, broke down to you, which one of the disciples came to the Lord and told the Lord about the Galileans in which they mingled blood with their sacrifice, with some type of sacrifices, which I guess in that time was something that was seen as uh, abominable. And then the Lord said to them, suppose that these Galileans were sinners above all sinners, were sinners above all Galileans because they suffered such things. So I'm not sure what type of crime that the Galileans had committed, but the disciples had said unto the Lord that Pilate mingled the blood of the Galileans with their sacrifices. And Jesus says, suppose that these Galileans were sinners above all sinners because they suffered such things. Jesus says, let me tell you this. No, they're not sinners above all sinners. And then he says, except you 
repent, you shall also likewise perish. So when the disciples were speaking to Jesus, Jesus just flipped the script on them. Jesus basically with full wisdom tells people what the true matter of the truth in anything they ask him. In that time when they begin to see his wisdom and understand that he is truly a man of great servitude. People almost fear to ask some questions. Not expecting the answer in which he would give them. So. When one would. Hear on news. Or hear by word of mouth that a particular person walks into a building and just starts shooting everyone and they died. Or or if a man goes on a manhunt and just start raping women and is killed. And then you speak and then you get others who says, Oh, he's just destined for hell and I hope he burns in hell and but then the Lord flips the script the Lord says do you think that they are sinners above all sinners he said no nah. he said except you you who say these things except you repent you too will perish so it's like no matter the volume of your sins without repentance you too will perish this will hit home for a lot of self-righteous individuals if one professes themselves to be a believer yet remains in sin what can that sin be lies men don't take lies serious nowadays what about one that's a coveter what about one that is pride prideful and lives in fornication in this world that individual that lives in that sin is seen as normal and that same individual professes themselves to be a believer Without repentance of these things, Jesus is basically saying they will likewise perish, perish, basically being destined to hell fire, being destined to hell, being destined to the lake of fire, just as one who commits the most ruthless crimes. They will be in the same uh, footsteps. As one who enters a building and just starts shooting up everybody. They will be in the same position of one who goes around on a, a, a spree. Raping women. And killing them. Jesus says, likewise. Do you really think that they are the worst sinners? It was a question that he asked his disciples. Jesus said, I'm going to tell you the truth. And, he's, and, then you, and the thing is, Jesus is the author of salvation, the creator of this whole world, the lawgiver. Jesus himself, the lawgiver, says they're not. And he breaks down the truth to them. He said, except you repent, you shall also likewise perish. So it's like whatever sin you commit, no matter how great it is, except the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, if you repent and are sincere, having a contrite spirit unto the Lord, you yourself shall be forgiven. And then he goes down to a parable and he speaks about a, a tree, which this tree represents an individual. And the Lord says, for years, I've looked at that tree to see if that tree will bear the fruits that I call men to bear. 
And in order to bear fruit, we know we must have the Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit that bears fruit within us. And before receiving the Holy Spirit, we ourselves must know that we would need to confess wrongdoings against the Lord, sin against the Lord. And have a changed mind in order to receive the Holy Spirit. So the Lord looks down at this earth, at the sons and daughters of man, examining everyone's life. And says, unless you likewise repent, unless you likewise repent. He says it to everyone. He don't care how great your sin is, unless you likewise, per- likewise repent. You shall perish. So while people on earth are pointing fingers at mass killings and women who have uh, had 10 abortions and doctors who go about killing women and are doing surgeries and these mass killings and whatnot, look at your own self. Look at your own life. Do you claim to be self-righteous? Have you even repented wholeheartedly? Receiving the Holy Spirit. But, But the thing is, if this was the case, the Holy Spirit also gives us wisdom to where we would know. Unless you likewise perish. You yourself. Unless you likewise repent, you yourself would perish. I wanted to go over this so that there won't be any self-righteous individuals. And as Apostle Paul said as well, he, Apostle Paul basically summarized and he said, there's those that condemn others and they themselves are living lawlessly. So while they do that, they're basically justifying that the law of God is good. They're basically justifying that the law of God is good if they're able to use that law to condemn someone else. But then Apostle Paul says, wait a minute, you need to look at yourself then. Because you're basically doing the same thing. Living lawlessly, yet yet have not confessed sin unto the Lord in repentance. Let this be a wake-up call to a lot of people. Next time when you're looking at the news, don't be so quick to judge somebody. Next time when you're looking at uh, uh, murder crimes on TV, first 48, snapped, whatever, be not quick to judge. The Lord tells us the truth. Accept you repent. You shall all likewise perish into lake fire. That's where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Because men were self-righteous. Thinking that they were better than this mass shooter. Yet they themselves lived in vanity. And in covetedness. And in greed. And in fornication. Take care.